and welcome to everybody who's listening uh, we are going to have a discussion on a very very important topic which is health data and how we can leverage technology to improve patient outcome using the health data so my name is dr tazeen i am a clinician and a health tech advisor and a director for seven solutions today i'm joined with esteemed leaders in the healthcare industry who are uh, using their expertise into using data for better healthcare delivery systems i will quickly do the introductions i'm joined by mohammed irfan who is the founder and ceo of seven solutions a software company that develops tailored innovative business solutions and are developing digital health solutions for the global market i think in today's landscape of healthcare innovation and disruption we all can agree that data readiness and availability is the key to systemic interoperability and is critical to accelerating healthcare innovation so healthcare needs data which is clean accessible secure interoperable and and that is accessible to all the users in the healthcare continuum of continuum of care now new data driven technologies are really changing the way the healthcare is given and also how the patients are receiving healthcare today because data accumulated in these data driven technologies such as smart watches um digital wearables um intelligent monitoring devices that use machine learning are giving it an opportunity to all the healthcare leaders to produce healthier future for patients so my first question that i uh, will ask all of you is how do you think access use and sharing of health data across systems can change the way we deliver healthcare today over to you irfan how do you see because you develop applications for so many different countries how do you see data improving patient delivery thank you everyone for having me here actually i'll share uh, some example with you that we faced recently we were designing an application for a psychologist so what we were doing is we were training an ai algorithm based on the data we received from that uh, doctor we train the application so that patient can talk to that application through chatbot and relate to his status and mental health with that application and then on the other hand we train the same application with the data of that particular patient when patient was talking to the doctor we were recording the data through you know voice to text and feeding that data to that particular application now when patient was talking to the same application trained on his own data he was able to you know uh, engage that application he was able to talk to that application for a longer period of time and doctor on the other hand and, and was able to get a accurate close to accurate results but when we were training the same as i said with the data that we got from the doctor that you know accumulated data based on many patients then patient was not able to engage himself with that particular patient so what is happening is that apart from that data skew sharing is that data manipulation problem when the data is not skew data can be manipulated and when you are training your machine learning algorithm bots on a manipulated data then you can you know imagine uh, the size of the damage that we can face all together you know all the efforts that we are doing in ai fields or in algorithms and everything all the efforts are going in vain because of that manipulated data we have uh, fortunately that we have a few rules in us and uk but we don't have any particular uh, rules in pakistan uh, in, uh, in many other countries but this is very very important i would say that if today uh, on the other one the healthcare providers are able to take some leverage get, uh, leverage the ai technology the application and everything because they have the data but on the other side patient cannot to get the best out of the data because patient cannot train the application according to his healthcare status uh, which is you know as a result what is happening i'm not getting accurate result that when uh, should i see the physician what should i eat when should i start exercise how much i uh, do the exercise and even in in my organization what we are observing is that you know your vitals are directly connected to your mental health mostly vitals are connected to your mental health and uh, we are not we don't have any application that can give us accurate prediction you know you need to do the walk you go out and do the walk go out and change your diet and all that stuff so this is very very important if we want to empower the patients if we want to help patient leverage the technology we need to show that security and we need to control that manipulation 
Absolutely. And I think this is a, a theme that I see in all your answers is that data is great. We all agree. Data has enormous potential. I, actually, I would say it's the key right now to this digital disruption. But when but we are in that uh, phase of where every day we see a new innovation or a disruptive technology, but we are st there's still a massive deficit in framework and guidelines of data acquisition, data sources, data sharing, data consent. And, and that's not a one person's job. I think it's a collaborative effort of all stakeholders and, uh, and industry leaders like all of you here. So who do you think is the most important stakeholder that can drive such initiatives of data management? Yeah, uh, I would like to add one point here. Uh, it's very important that, he, as you just said, that education. Basically, yes, uh, it is uh, right that uh, healthcare providers, hospital farmers will need to step up. But I feel like it's, it's our responsibility as well as a data science uh, companies that we need to step up. Why we need to step up? Well, why we can take initiative as well as this. We need to develop an infrastructure. Let's say we're going to develop a blockchain. We're going to educate healthcare providers that what is the benefit here for you to put the data on the blockchain. Then we go and educate the patient that what is the benefit for you in this. And then go and educate the college and universities that why you should come and use that technology and how you can use that technology. If we take an example of Pakistan, we don't have any public blockchain where hospital can put their data onto, where patient can upload their data are, they mostly, they don't even know how to use the blockchain. They're not comfortable with it until, unless they, the, the, uh, the providers are fully comfortable with the technology, they will always find themselves hesitated to take an initiative. And who can educate them? We can educate them who are spending their time to understand the technology by diving deep into it. So we all together as a team, we need to step up. We need to develop a system. We need to educate all these things, make them comfortable, and then they will take initiative. It's a collaborative effort, but the education is a key factor here. Absolutely. Right stakeholders, I would say, is the key because we are seeing a lot of resistance to adoption of technology. Uh, not, I wouldn't say only in Pakistan, I see it a lot globally as well. And that is because of lack of awareness and lack of inclusion of key stakeholders in the decision making. Not only after you've made a bill or you've created something, oh, take this and implement it. No, involve them. Try to educate them from the start so you have a better chance of them coming on board early on. And then they can be your uh, mentors and your voice to the, uh, to the larger population. So absolutely. So I think uh, 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 Irfan touched a little bit about it. I, I think um, this is something that I think we all, um, the world is moving towards is uh, blockchain technology. And I know that data sharing and uh, the lack of transparency, the lack of security uh, of data is, uh, is a very hot topic right now. And a lot of countries are trying to come up with solutions. And blockchain is one of that emerging technologies that is advocating that they are safer, more transparent um, than the centralized databases. So my question would be, how do you think is do you think blockchain is the answer to the current problems of uh, data lack of transparency and uh, security? Yeah, uh, this is a very important question, actually, Dr. Tazeen. Uh, thank you for putting it up. Basically, uh, blockchain is going to answer many questions and many problems. It is not all about uh, security of the data. As I said, and Dr. Munawar said, correct data, and as I said, uh, data manipulation is, is a huge problem. So blockchain is going to answer all this problem. How blockchain is going to answer this problem, I'll explain it at the end. But before you know, uh, let me uh, summarize the overall problem, the bigger picture. The bigger picture is this. Patients don't have any control over their data at all. We all know that blockchain can give control back to the patient in a secure systematic manner there are few third parties who can trade track and negotiate the data without any consensus from the patient on the other hand there are researchers medical researchers tech researchers like us who are developing algorithms blockchains and training the models and getting the best prediction out of the data so the problem is there is a gap between all those four major stakeholders the gap is this, the data secure, 
and uh, uncorrect data, unchanged correct data between all these things. So when I'm as a uh, data owner, as a healthcare provider, as a third party, I'm going to send the data to a research wing, let's say artificial intelligence company, or maybe a medical researcher for the research and how I'm sending that data to them. What is the guarantee that the data is not fully secure and unchained data and everybody knows about it? When we are talking about blockchain, there is a term in a cryptography called zero knowledge proof, you know, where one party can prove the validity of the data to another party without revealing the data. There's a, there's a very good technology. You know, I can show that the data is secure, but I'm not showing the data to anyone. So as an AI company, as I said uh, initially, as an AI uh, company, if I'm going to get the data and the data is not manipulated, intact and accurate, what is going to happen is I'm going to get the accurate result, closed accurate result, accurate prediction, a good AI model train on that data. The blockchain answers this question in a, a systematic manner because of the nature of the blockchain technology, decentralized, distributed, uh, I would call it distributed ledger technology in this conversation, I would call it distributed storage technology. You know? So no one is owning the data, no one is controlling the data. There is no single point of failure when we are going to implement the blockchain. Yes, there is a lot of legalization uh, uh, can come on board, but when we distribute the data, decentralize the data using cryptographic algorithm and give control back to the patient, uh, researchers, uh, healthcare uh, providers, they all have the da data access at the same time, transparent, fully controlled correct data access and that can revolutionize the healthcare system. It is not about just security, but uh, revolutionize the entire system because everyone can leverage the data at the same time, accurate data, technology, patient and health provider. This is where blockchain can play a huge role. How do you see blockchain coming in? When do you see blockchain will pick up and pop this up? And if you see any uh, uh, initiatives being taken by companies? Well, I, I see one challenge here in Pakistan, particularly talking about Pakistan. If a third party, I won't name or categorize any third party, if a third party owning the data and they are able to trade the data, track the data and negotiate the data and make a, a huge profit out of that data, why would they give that data to the patient, back to the patient and saying that go and sell your data, take our profit, we don't want to make money. Yeah. That's a bitter truth I would call it. Yeah. So what we have to do and what we can do is this. We can create a win-win situation between farmers, uh, hospitals, and patients. Let's say I can give, I can share my idea here. Let's say a, a small clinic, a pharma, is having a one million record. One million record. So what they can do is they can trade, negotiate, and make uh, profit out of those one million record. But there are other uh, farmers out there, other uh, hospitals out there. They are having much more data than that. So what we can do as a data scientist, we create a system. You create a system when a, a entity, a third party with a 1 million record is going to upload their data on a public blockchain and another entity is going to do the same and another entity is going to do the same, then that means there is a, a millions of uh, data records on that chain and the entity who are you know able to make profit from 1 million record, now they are able to get the profit from the 100 million records on the blockchain. So little uh, coordination between patients, if patient is gonna uh, trade the data, a little cut will go to the data owners. The third parties the third parties will get in small percentages but they will get a lot money than they have what uh, they're doing right now so basically we need if we can develop the system and encourage them in terms of business in terms of security in terms of system that patient will have the control but if patient is going to trade his data you're going to get something out of it it's not like you're giving everything back to patient and on the other end, patient can have something. This is a blockchain that we can develop here. And of course, we're going to need a lot of legal sports and all that stuff. That's my idea that we are working on it. But obviously, this is not something a one entity can do. What would be your closing points and something you want to talk, share with us before we leave the conversation? See, uh, I'll just talk about one factor here. when we are talking about data security, data uh, secure transfer, when we're talking about blockchain and AI. Basically, uh, we put it together in a way that it is a digital transformation that healthcare system is going towards. And when we are talking about digital transformation, the most important factor to start and to correctly implement uh, that uh, uh, transformation is a mindset. 
when we are talking about blockchain we are only talking about blockchain and ai but it's a system i would call system is that starting from iot's blockchain ai and cyber security ai cannot secure a blockchain cannot secure everything blockchain can secure your data to some uh, certain data and then there is a data that you need to implement cyber security so what is this iot that can feel a uh, blockchain that can secure ai that can think and cyber security that can secure your overall infrastructure so when we are talking about digital transformation we need to go in uh, take all these four factors with us and the most important part is the mindset we need to you know uh, adopt that understand that and educate ourselves to uh, implement all these things